Hello, it's January the 21st, 2020, and we've got yet more breaking news right here on Wi-Fi Sheep. Wi-Fi Sheep would like to say a huge thank you to all of you that kindly support us. Help us continue to bring new videos like this. Join patreon.com forward slash Wi-Fi Sheep from just $1 a month. Hi everyone, how are you doing? Very good morning. Uh, I woke up this morning with my Twitter feed literally alight because the Pi Foundation had announced yet another new product. This one is actually quite interesting. So the Raspberry Pi Foundation today have released what they're calling the Raspberry Pi Pico, or I think it's going to be pronounced Pico, but it's actually the correct pronunciation for this is actually Pico. But it's a brand new microcontroller, what they're calling a microcontroller class product, uh, released by the Pi Foundation. Um, so just to kind of be very clear about what this isn't, this is not a brand new Raspberry Pi. And I think a lot of people are going to get very confused when they see this. They're going to run out and get one and then realise that you can't boot Linux on it and you can't put an SD card in it. Well, not straight. So... That's one thing to look at. Um, so yeah, it's actually a microcontroller, not a standalone Pi board. Um, name, as I said, I suspect it's probably going to be called the Pi code, the Raspberry Pi Pi Co. Um, the actual pronunciation I said is Pico, which in Japanese I think means something like small or tiny. And this board is tiny. It's actually smaller than the Raspberry Pi Zero. Now today it's been announced it's gone free on the front cover of Hackspace magazine. And I have attempted to try and get hold of a copy today, but here in the UK, especially here in England, we are in a COVID-19 pandemic lockdown, which means that legally you can't just gallivant off to try and buy things from wherever you want. Um, I did do an essential run to a supermarket this morning. Uh, they didn't have the magazine. And quite frankly, in this part of the world, you're more likely to get Farmers Weekly than you are any kind of tech uh, magazines, unfortunately. So I haven't been able to get hold of one. Um, saying that I have actually gone and put one on order with uh, the Pi Hut, one of the official Raspberry Pi uh, third party vendors. The price at the moment is, the price at $4 US, which has worked out at time of recording of uh, £3.60. Um, I did notice though when I ordered from the Pi Hut that they were already limiting customers to three units each. Um, a bit like what they did with the uh, Zeros, Pi Zero, which has been around for a few years now, is still limited in what you can buy. Uh, so I don't, I don't know, I don't think there's going to be the huge rush on this when people realise it's not actually a brand new Raspberry Pi. I'm not sure there's going to be a rush, but we'll see. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's have a look at the quick tech specs. We'll go over to raspberrypi.org. So here's uh, what the site's saying. If you go through to the blog, by the way, it's a blog post on the main page. And it reads, meet Raspberry Silicon, Raspberry Pi Pico, now on sale at $4. So basically, uh, what's really interesting about this is they've actually commissioned and producing their own CPU chips for the very first time. Every other uh, Pi product has used the Broadcom ARM CPU. But this is the first time they've actually developed their own architecture base. It is still an ARM base, but uh, yeah, this is interesting. So... Um, yeah, the chipset, they're calling it the RP2040... Um, a brand new chip developed right here at Raspberry Pi. Um, there's the uh, picture of the uh, Hackspace, which on the front cover of it. I don't think I'm going to be able to get a hold of that in time, but never mind. Uh, brief description about what microcomputers and microcontrollers are. And the uh, Raspberry SI. There we are. So it seem, seems like every fruit company is making their own silicon. That's, of course, a reference to Apple and the M2, M1, M2 line of uh, ARM processors that are now being fitted to the next generation Mac. Uh, here's the tech spec. So we'll go straight into the tech spec. So it's a dual core ARM Cortex M0 clocked to 133 megahertz. Now, when you're used to Raspberry Pis now running in the gigahertz, you think back to megahertz is quite slow. You think the first Raspberry Pi and the Model 1 from 2011, 2012 ran at 700 megahertz. This is running at 133. But you have to remember, this is not a standalone personal computer. It's a microcontroller. Now, from microcontroller perspective, that's quite fast. 
Uh, the RAM on board is 264 kilobytes or K of RAM, so it's not a megabyte. Uh, and again, you might think, well, that's nothing. But again, it's a microcontroller. That's quite a lot for a microcontroller. Uh, support for up to um, 16 megabytes of off-chip flash memory. I don't think that's actually included. Uh, DMA controller. Let's have a look. 30 GPIO pins, four of which can be used as analog inputs. 2x UART, 2x SBI connectors, and 2x uh, I2C controllers. Those are the serial channels. Uh, a lot of microcontrollers actually use RX and TX serial to pass data back and forth, so uh, that's quite useful. And it also talks here about the uh, keychains are going to be available, or tool chains, I should say. Uh, so GCC compiler. So there's actually a C-based uh, compiler for it. Um, but they're also recommending using MicroPython, which is what they're going to officially support. Uh, voltage range, this thing will run between 1.8 and 5.5 volts. Uh, 2 megabytes of flash memory on board, which is a lot of flash memory. Um, and you can, actually, can buy them in bulk. So basically this microcontroller needs to be powered and uh, uploaded and controlled from another computer. Uh, so, for example, a Raspberry Pi running uh, Raspbian Linux would be fine for doing that. As I've already mentioned when we looked at tech specs, the Pi Foundation are recommending that they're going to use MicroPython as the language to program this controller. So basically what happens with uh, controllers is you, either, you have a language such as MicroPython or C, and you write your code. You then have to compile it to the native chip language, which used to be things like the Atmega uh, 328 processor that we've been using on the Arduino, or now this new ARM chipset from the Pi Foundation themselves, and it will just compile it straight to an instruction set, and then it uploads the code, and then it runs the code. So it's not an interpreter language like standard uh, Python would be that you could just run uh, without needing to recompile. But again, they're gonna supply other tools to do this, so it's not such a big problem. Interestingly though, they also mentioned that they're going to be offering this chipset architecture to some of the rival manufacturers. So we've already seen announcements of an upgraded Arduino Nano featuring this new 32-bit ARM processor. Uh, that's extremely interesting. It's the first time that the Pi Foundation have actually done something where they've had like officially supported clones that are going to be completely binary compatible. Um, and as a result, I fully suspect that this new board will be able to use the Arduino IDE uh, online environment, uh, also be able to code using the standard C stock, and a lot of the Arduino libraries might actually work straight out of the box. But we'll have to see, because it's a completely different chip architecture and also pinout. Uh, so I've got to experiment with that to see if that's true or not. I also find it really interesting that the Pi Foundation are actually using their own silicon for the very first time. And this kind of feeds into some of the rumours about what Raspberry Pi 5 will be. Uh, the rumour being that it's going to move away from the Broadcom ARM chipset to a RISC-V or RISC-V architecture. If the Pi Foundation is now capable of making their own CPU cores, then it's not a huge leap to imagine that Raspberry Pi 5 will be a completely new Linux-powered architecture. So that's very, very interesting and definitely one to watch. Now, for me personally and for us here on Wi-Fi Sheep, why is this so interesting? Well, if you've been following the channel, you might be aware that we've been running our own series called Tiny Basic Computers, which is a series of videos here on YouTube. And we also have a dedicated standalone Facebook group. The premise of the project was to take two microcontrollers, in this case we're using Arduino Nanos, which are 8-bit microcontrollers, and we were building our own standalone 8-bit programmable computer. A really, really simple system that loads what's known as Tiny Basic and allows you to actually plug a keyboard in one end, a standard video monitor a TV set out the other end, and you've got a very simple black and white text prompt display and you could actually write basic code into it, like it was a sort of mid to late 70s, very early 80s microcomputer. If you want to find out more about that, go and check out the playlist. The box is probably about there or there on the screen right now. And also, don't forget to check out our Facebook group on this, which is facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash WFS Tiny Basic. One of the issues we have been having is the Arduino Nano boards we've been using have 2K, 
that's 2,000 bytes of RAM on board. By the time we've loaded the interpreter and a sound module, we're down to about 999 bytes. That's just less than 1K of RAM to actually write any basic programs in. This is quite a limiting challenge, um, and it's something we've been working with with the project so far. I am now wondering if these new Raspberry Pi Pico or Pico boards could be used as a direct drop-in replacement. Now, the pinout is different and the architecture is different, so it's not going to be a direct straight swap, but the amount of RAM this new board has would be very, very useful, and if built into a circuit using a separate video terminal and an input device for keyboard and mouse, you could actually make this microcontroller into a complete standalone computer. And for us, with our tiny basic project, it would mean a huge jump from 8-bit architecture right up to 32 dual-core architecture. So definitely want to look forward to, and if you want to follow the progress of how we get on with that, then obviously do join us for our Tiny Basic Computers series, and I'll let you know how we get on. So what do you think about all this? Do let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and if you haven't done already, do not forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you real soon right here on the channel. Until next time, thank you so much for your company. Stay safe, and I'll see you real soon. Bye for now. Thank you.